Hello, Chart Watchers and Decision Point Faithful. Welcome to this Monday, October 21st, 2019 Decision Point Show with your hosts, Carl and Aaron Swenlin. And uh, we welcome you. If you have never watched the show before, I think you're going to love it. And for our regulars, of course, welcome back. All right, before I even get started with the agenda, uh, I'm going to bring in my father, Carl. How's everything going? Very good. It's a pretty day today, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love California days, that's for sure. Fall weather coming into play. So what, now high high 70s, low 70s? <laughs> uh, actually, I was supposed to get to 90 today, but it's still... Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we have lots to cover today. We're going to look at, I'm going to look at the broad markets, uh, the price relative uh, to the S&P. There's some interesting uh, developments there. We'll look at the DP scoreboards. I'm going to go over a, really quickly a sector candle glance to give you an understanding of where the PMO and the trend models are for the sectors. Uh, I want to show you the RIDEX ratio chart uh, in particular today. There was uh, some interesting movement on it uh, last week that I want to show you. And then our bonus, of course, uh, Carl will be doing a very special segment about market crash anniversaries because we're right there on them. So we'll talk a little bit about that. He's got some great charts. And then, of course, we will follow that up with Carl's grab bag. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Here are the decision point scoreboards currently. And I have marked what uh, signals came in last week. Uh, it's been kind of a, an interesting, you know, last week was pretty interesting. We did manage to get that tread model, uh, the five day EMA back above the 20 day EMA. Uh, we had uh, PMO buy signals come in on all four of the major large cap indexes. And, uh, you know, right now it's still looking pretty good. Uh, I'll show you a few of those charts in just a little bit. Uh, the DP sector scoreboard is now all in green, except for the laggard, of course, of energy. This sector has certainly been uh, struggling as of late. So let me go ahead. I'm going to show you um, the sector candle glance. I should have it here for you right in a moment. Okay. Uh, so the sector candle glance, I have my own candle glance style. And right here, you can see that you can customize yours as well. And it's, it'll show you how to do that if you're a member. Uh, I like to have mine customized with the 20 day EMA in green, the 50 in purple, and then the blue, of course, being the 200 day EMA. And then the bottom pane is the price momentum oscillator or PMO. So what I wanted to point out to you is, of course, we just noted that the only uh, sector that has sell signals is energy. But as you can see, the PMO is starting to make a move to the upside slightly here. And, uh, you know, consumer staples, momentum wise is starting to finally it's starting to turn a little bit it's flattened out uh, but of interest is of course this brand new short-term pmo buy signal coming in on real estate sector and i'm, I'm looking at a very large uh, gap here uh, margin between the pmo and its signal line for the utility sector of course both staples real estate utilities those are all in that um, defensive sector those defensive sectors all right, so let me go ahead now. I'm going to show you some of our, let's see, get back up here. So my lovely dashboard, I'm going to go down to my chart lists and my decision point live chart list. This is available to you. All you have to do is go to the decision point blog uh, and hit the articles tab and you're going to find the link to this decision point live chart list. So you can get all of these charts I'm about to show you, but I want to go ahead and we're going to start off with the price relative chart that I have. And these are kind of the major indexes. You have the large caps, of course, technology and uh, the 400 and the 600. And what I wanted to point out is, of course, we're, we saw uh, rel price relative to the S&P 500, the Dow, uh, very much underperforming the S&P last week. Uh, I know Boeing probably had a lot to do with that. Uh, S&P 100 also starting to not perform quite as well as the S&P 500. But this is something I think is bullish. We are starting to see the uh, mid caps and small caps starting to outperform 
the S&P. And that's a good sign if we can get um, participation across uh, the small, large, and, and mid caps, of course, that's going to keep the trend moving higher. Uh, broad market indexes, just looking at the chart here, it's kind of similar to what you just saw. But what we can see is the 400 and the 600, S&P 400, 600, been in a trading range sideways, still well off of their all-time highs, uh, unlike the uh, equal weight and then the Dow, of course, we, where we've seen some of those highs uh, challenged and hit. All righty, global markets, nothing really new to report on this chart. Um, we're, we're seeing a little bit of a breakout here um, above the highs that we had back uh, in 2019 for the Nikkei. So I thought that one was uh, rather interesting, but everything else is about the same. I, I'm not seeing much there. All right, so let's go ahead. I'm going to start off with the S&P chart because, of course, that's the, the main one we want to talk about. And there's a couple of things we can look at here. And, Dad, I know when you wrote your weekly wrap, um, you alluded to the fact we might have a triple top forming. I know we both have been watching this double top going on. Uh, clearly, the all-time highs are really a, a difficult, uh, difficult to overcome uh, at this point, it seems every time we get really close, we're starting to fail. And you can almost see this rounding off. I know we had a nice big day today, but um, you know, it doesn't look like, I don't see that momentum looking that great. Um, I mean, today's intraday high did not pass the high we had last week. Uh, we, so I'm the suspect. problem with the, the S&P 500 chart is that it's not adjusted for dividends. And uh, if you look at the SPY chart, it has, uh, it, it's within half a percentage point of making uh, all time highs. So okay. you don't see that, uh, you know, such a divergence there of, of uh, against all time highs. Mm -hmm. I don't, this doesn't look as. <laughs> well, it's the spy. It is mine, but uh, there you go. I, <laughs> it is within a half a percent, anyhow. It's right. It looks, yeah. Right. Uh, the other thing I was noting in the, the weekly uh, decision point alert midweek last Wednesday was, you know, for, for the bulls out there, if, you know, you could make a case, I think, for an ascending triangle, which, of course, the, um, the what we're supposed to expect, the expectation, of course, is a breakout, which would imply that we will see new all-time highs. I'm, you know, I love my patterns and all of that, but I'm just not seeing the kind of action I would want to see. Uh, on volume, in particular, the OBV. So I'm a little suspect of that particular possible pattern, but I, you know, I'm going to lay it out there because it, it is there as a possibility. Uh, the Dow, remember, we noted that it wasn't performing quite as well, and here you go. Um, notice that definitely a totally different look than what we're seeing on the S&P 500. I mean. Um, a rounded top here. We're we're sitting here trying to uh, hold a support level at the 20-day EMA as well as at um, the top we saw back here in April. Uh, seeing this kind of weakness uh, is something to keep in mind. You know, if we are looking at trying to uh, best those all-time highs uh, again, like I was saying earlier, I really like to see. Uh, participation across the board. And if we have one of these major indexes lagging, I think it could pull, uh, pose some gravity, let's put it that way, toward uh, the S&P and, and some of the others. Let's look really quickly now at the uh, short-term indicators. These are the ultra short-term indicators. So we're looking at breadth, new highs, new lows, uh, net advanced declines, and uh, the VIX. And we invert our VIX because uh, it tells us overbought and oversold based on the sentiment factor that the VIX has. And as you can see, we hit the top of that Bollinger Band. We never quite penetrated it, but we immediately started heading back down. Uh, we're still we're still in the uh, on top of this moving average, so I think that is positive. Um, but uh, so I don't think this is telling us too much. We did get a little bit of a, a spike here on the net advances declines, but overall, I'm not really seeing anything uh, in particular to get excited about, especially when you look at the volume. Yeah, the volume today really sucked. Really bad, especially coming in on a you know a nice uh, day to the upside. It it certainly can 
Well, it tempers the <laughs> tempers the bullishness, I have to say. Uh, short term, our Swinland trading oscillators, they did top, they top below the previous top, um, which really is confirming the declining tops we're seeing here as well. We did get it to tick back upward, um, but when you're looking at a, a day of you know almost 0.7% gain, uh, I, I wasn't surprised to see that, but we do need to keep an eye on it. It is overbought, and if we start to see it turn back down, I mean, that's typically going to come during a decline. And our intermediate term indicators right here. Uh, they look great. I mean, there's really no arguing that at this point. They've got the positive crossovers. They're heading upward. They are not overbought. Uh, so in the intermediate term, that does uh, give, give us a little bit of comfort uh, that we're not going to experience anything too terrible just yet. And then the last one I wanted to show you was that uh, Rydex chart. And I don't know if you saw this, Dad, but we had quite the spike on the assets uh, last week on the bear funds. No, I did. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. I mean, huge move to the upside. So the Rydex chart is basically a group of funds. Uh, Guggenheim um, manages, used to be named Rydex, long story short. What we do is we look at this group of funds, this basket, and it gives us um, the bear funds, bull and sector funds, and then we can get the assets for the money market. So rather than those typical surveys, I feel bullish, I feel bearish, this kind of gives you an idea where the money is actually going and sitting. And at this point, you know, we had this huge um, bearish sentiment come in with the big move on assets to the upside here for uh, the Rydex bear funds. But at the same time, you know, we, we did see um, right here, we're seeing that increase in the, the equity funds, those bull funds, and we're pulling back from the neutral position of money markets. So I just find it interesting, you know, before when I looked at this chart last week, uh, it was about mainly about the fact we were increasing money market. We were decreasing in a serious way the um, bull funds. And what I really want to point out on this chart right now is that uh, bull bear, uh, I'm sorry, bear bull ratio that we have, the right X ratio. And we're s sitting in very uh, oversold territory. Typically, when we hit this, this is telling us that the sentiment is very, very bearish. And so the expectation should then be um, a, a rally because when people get that bearish, uh, typically we're going to see a market reversal. And that's what I wanted to present. So I'm going to pass it over to you, Dad, to show us a little history. Uh, let's see. It says you cannot start to share with what other participants are sharing. Ah, we didn't we didn't test that, did we? Yeah. Uh, my producer and technical director out in the background. So hopefully we'll be able to fix that without doing a stop share, just let me know in the background. But uh, in the meantime, while we wait to make that happen, uh, I'm gonna show you our articles tab and the decision point blog right here. I don't know how many of you have been reading it as of late, but on Fridays, we do the deeply, DP weekly wrap. Uh, when the show is on Fridays, we, you know, Carl pretty much went through this, um, but now you can go and go back and read it. Uh, and also I've started this new um, product called the DP Daily Diamonds. And it basically gives you five um, scan results, um, scan picks. So I, I really, I enjoy these. These aren't to, to give you a, you know, go buy this, but it gives you an idea of what's going on in the market and what I look for uh, on a chart and when I think it looks bullish. And so it's a really great learning experience and I've started to incorporate weekly charts as well. So I uh, recommend you go check it out. And I just got the note that you are ready to share. Okay. And here we go. Yay, there we are. Looking there was, we, we get a, or I do, a, a daily email from the CMT Association and uh, there was an article there today about uh, perhaps we're looking like another top going into a crash. Uh, I just really kind of skimmed the article. I didn't really uh, get any ideas. I got the idea just 
that I should cover previous crashes today. I think it would be interesting and uh, maybe we learn something. But, you know, as they say, who doesn't, who doesn't learn from history is doomed to repeat it. <laughs> so we'll talk about, the, first of all, the uh, 29 crash, which today, this month is the 90th anniversary of the, the uh, crash in 1929 and the 32nd anniversary for the 87 crash. So uh, going into this, we can see the parabolic. I'm sure nobody talked about it back then, but this is the kind of thing we see. It was just getting vertical, and that's it's got to break at some point. Even here was vertical. It didn't look good. If you had gotten out, so what? <laughs> Not too, <laughs> you know, you would have missed. You, you wouldn't have got that, but you would have lost and hadn't, wouldn't have to sit through all this. But um, unless I should comment that there's no way, I mean, we can look back and say, oh, yeah, that tells all kinds of bad things, this, this indicator, whatever. And we really don't know how we would have responded in real time to this, but just to indicate how, uh, uh, this, in this case, how parabolics are just bad things see it was a the crash was from here to here and that was almost 50 percent and uh let's go to the next one you can see overall it went down almost 90 percent from the from the top in 1929 okay um now, um, after this huge decline, um, did hit a bottom and then it went up almost 50%. When you have a 50% decline, it takes a 100% advance to uh, get it all back. So it's not easy to do. But no, no doubt people who were, lived through this were really happy to see this rally. But as we know, that was just uh, the end of it. But I will go back to that other chart at uh, one time. Uh, we do the uh, 2050 EMA crossovers. We had one up here and uh, I had an upside crossover here. Then we had a downside crossover, whipsaw here. Um, and I don't think that was a whipsaw. But uh, all the rest of the way down, it was uh, misery. This is what I like to show periodically, the 87 crash. Um, first of all, you, get, you have a, a picture like this, this chart pattern here. And what happened, it... it uh, it was a consolidation and it went on to new all time highs. And then you had the, almost the identical pattern here. And it just, it's just so, it's so close. It's, it's just, it's just crazy. And at this point is where it should have rallied higher if that's what it was going to do. It tried it and it, it broke down. Um, there was a, a few days warning by the crossover of the 2050 EMAs, and uh, we got a, a PMO crossover uh, here, which was uh, not, you know, it was, it was on the zero line, not as bad as you would, uh, not as bad as what we had, and I didn't, I meant to show that uh, in the earlier picture. The PMO here, it, it was below the zero line and uh, it top PMO top below its uh, uh, signal line. So bad news all around. Back to the 87 crash. Notice that we had somewhat of not quite as steep 
but it's somewhat of a uh, parabolic rise here. And uh, it didn't take long, but we had the, back in 29, we had the, the ultimate top and then we had uh, uh, a smaller top and that's, and it came down out of that. So, uh, but that was it. It didn't, it, it was by the end of, uh, end of October, the, the maximum decline had, had taken place. I do remember that day. I was uh, in college at the time, but I, I remember all of the murmuring and and uh, all of the everybody talking about it, especially all the business majors. And at the time, I wasn't really sure how it would affect me, but um, I, I do remember it. Well, I had started my studies of the market in about 1980-81. And I was doing everything manually, calculating OBVs on uh, the Dow 30 plus and maybe 100 other stocks. And it just got to be so bad about 19, middle of 1986, I just threw my hands up and said, I can't do this. <laughs> so uh, I was very brilliant. I was out of the market <laughs> during the crash. <laughs> <laughs> so when people ask me, which nobody asked now. This is as, this is as old as the uh, twenty nine crash. Now nobody even thinks about it. We'd already we've already talked about this, but you you can see we have a we don't have a declining top line here except right here, and uh, I, I talked about us being a triple top a double top it's uh kind of neither right now but uh, mainly i think this structure the, the dynamics behind it would be the same as a double top if it if it comes down and tests this and breaks down I mean, we're going to have we can do projections off of the breakdown this, uh, which uh last time i looked it was like 260 the minimum downside projection, but it's, you know, right now we're chart we're uh, up at the uh, near all time high. So a little, little uh, early to be talking about that. Oh yeah. That's, that's one of the other thing I was going to say is that we don't have the kind of top here that we had in 87 and uh, 1929. So, uh, and I was looking at the weekly chart to see if we had anything resembling that, and of course not, but we do have some problems here. Uh, here being, here's another parabolic, which I probably speak about much, way too much, but uh, it, it did break down and it wasn't a, a market killing action. But this uh, broadening top is a problem. And you notice that on this uh, rising top line, it didn't make it up there last time, and it's well below it now. And a uh, little bit of hope. This is not. It was. It, it turned up today. The the weekly PMO turned up today, but it's not the end of the week, so don't know if that's going to be good. Anyway, this is. I I don't see this as a uh, anything that resembles. 29 and 87, but it's a, it's a, uh, it's somewhat troublesome, but you know, not, I can't go back in history and say, see this happen. <laughs> okay. Any comments on the, the crashes uh, or, or I'll move on to some, some of my other stuff here. Yeah. I mean, this chart you're showing right now, I, I do, um, we don't talk, we talk about parabolics a lot, but one of the other patterns that a lot of people don't talk about are those broadening patterns. And it's really just telling you that the price is getting more and more volatile. And of course your, your, um, your support levels are, are you know, moving lower a lot of times. So it's just, it's not a comfortable pattern to see on a chart. And uh, yeah, I don't see too many similarities at this point to, to 29 and, and 80, um, 
87, but um, it's certainly something to keep an eye on. And I did find that interesting that the, in the 87, it did have that, um, that those structure, the price structure was really similar. Um, I, I did not really realize that. I hadn't looked at that uh, closely. Well, the uh, another thing I meant to mention is that the pattern now is not really close, but it's more resembles the uh, 2000 top and the 2007 top. I mean, the, those two were major market tops, but uh, they didn't resemble the, the you know the two crash tops. So uh, this is uh, it's not like something bad can't happen. I'm not saying it's will, but it's. It's not looking as good as it could at this point. Mm -hmm. The yield array, I'm looking at double bottom on the yield uh, uh, squiggles here. Um, not so much, I don't know how much I'm invested in that. It hasn't updated today. A gold cross. And silver cross indexes are um, still negative divergences. Uh, right now, silver crosses um, 58, almost 60%. Golden crosses were down around uh, 64. This is not a deadly situation. It could be better, but as I recall back, this, the 2000 top was being made, it was down uh, at 50% on one of the uh, other um, indicators of this type that I was following. So yeah, I, I, this is what could be way better, but uh, it's, it's not necessarily a, a deadly situation at this point. Yeah, I guess the question is, is that, a, is it enough to, to, um you know, support a move to all-time highs. It just seems like we're getting a little less participation. Right. If it was going to do it, you'd think it would have done it by now. Because it's been tr trying since uh, in the summer. It's made two previous attempts. Now it's the third attempt to go. Could be the third time it's charmed. Mm -hmm. um, here we go with the bullish percent index for... Um, three major indexes. Uh, again, this is not particularly uh, what's going that Wait a minute. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> um, negative divergences on all these indexes, major, all these major indexes. Here, the, the uh, NYSE is at a, um, around just a little over 50%. The uh, NASDAQ is at that 47% um, bullish signal. So it's, can, could be, could be better. Mm -hmm. How are we doing for time here? We got about 40 seconds, so. Okay. I think I might've had a point here is the, the, uh, we had some climactic, action on this one indicator. The rest of it, we're not getting the, it's not like there's an initiation climax and we're going anyway. Yeah, yeah. And I think we pointed out the problem with the volume as well. All right, well, it is time to close it off. Uh, thanks everybody for joining us. We are on Mondays at 5 p.m. Eastern. Don't miss it and have a great trading day.